Welcome to the Matic Service Guide. As a word of caution, working with pressurized suspension can be dangerous. Always be sure you're wearing eye and skin protection when working. Never work directly over or have the system pointed in a direction of other people. Always decompress the system and double check that it's uncharged before working. With that said, let's get started. To start off, here are the key external components you will need to know to perform maintenance on your Matic. At the bottom of the Matic in blue is the rebound adjustment knob, and in black is the air valve cap. This is the low speed adjustment knob in the red. Right above that in the black is the high speed adjustment knob. Finally, in silver is the hydraulic bottom out adjustment knob. All Matics produced in 2014 will have a standard air cap. Forks produced in 2015 and in the future will be built with a volume reducing air cap. When disassembling and reassembling a Matic or any Manitou suspension, be sure to work on a clean surface to prevent contamination. Be sure to use lint-free towels. Stray fibers can actually get caught between the inner legs and the seals of the outer legs, causing fluid leaks. You will need many tools to disassemble and reassemble the Matic. Most of these tools are common. To disassemble and reassemble your Matic, you will need to purchase the Matic Toolkit. This includes the Matic 8mm thin-walled socket, the Matic cassette tool, and the Matic flat ground 24mm socket. Begin by clamping the Matic in a bike stand slightly on an upward angle. This slight upward angle will prevent the semi-bath fluid from leaking out of the fork during disassembly. Remove the black air valve cap by twisting counterclockwise. Remove the blue rebound knob by securing with two fingers and with a two millimeter Allen wrench, unscrew the bolt counterclockwise. Attach a shock pump to the valve stem and depress the pump pressure relief button to depressurize the air chamber. Remove the shock pump and depress the valve stem with an Allen wrench to be sure all of the pressure is purged from the system. With an 8mm Allen wrench, loosen the rebound assembly from the outer casting by turning clockwise. With the 8mm thin walled socket, unthread the compression rod out of the lower casting by turning clockwise. As an added note, the compression rod and TPC rebound rod adapters loosen clockwise and tighten counterclockwise. If you can push the rebound and compression rod into the casting you know that has been disconnected from the outer casting. With this indication, you're now ready to pull the outer casting from the inner legs. Remove the outer casting and place over a tray or bucket. There will be about 15 cc or 15 milliliters of semi-bath fluid in each outer leg. You'll want to let this drain out before reinstalling the legs. Before removing the compression rod, check to make sure all the air is out of the system. Use a Matic cassette tool and an adjustable wrench to loosen counterclockwise until the compression rod cap disengages from the inner leg. You can now pull the compression rod assembly out. Be sure to pull straight out to prevent scratching of the inner leg. Clamp the crown steer assembly in a stand over a bucket, allowing easy access to the top cap. Using a Matic flat ground 24 mm socket, loosen the top cap in the counterclockwise direction. As an added tip, while loosening the top cap, apply medium pressure to the ratchet. This will secure the socket onto the top cap while removing it, preventing any slipping of the socket which can damage the top cap. Hold the hydraulic bottom out adjuster knob and unscrew the lock bolt on the top of the MC squared assembly. Grab onto the high speed adjuster and pull straight up while holding the hydraulic bottom out adjuster knob down with your thumb. This will expose the 13 millimeter nut holding down the low speed adjuster. Using a 13 millimeter socket, unscrew the nut on top of the low speed adjuster. You can now remove the low speed adjuster by pulling straight up and out exposing the MC squared assembly cap. As an added note here, 
if the small washer below the low speed adjuster didn't come out, remove with a plastic pick and store in the same orientation for reinstallation. Insert the Matic cassette tool and with a ratchet, loosen the cap of the MC squared assembly. Loosen the cap until it no longer migrates up in relation to the crown. It may make a couple of clicks after every revolution when it is fully unthreaded. You can now extract the MC squared assembly from the crown steer assembly by pulling it straight up and out. With the MC squared assembly extracted, we can now pour the majority of the fork fluid out of the inner leg of the crown steer assembly. Insert the Matic cassette tool into the TPC rebound assembly's cap. Loosen the cap and extract the TPC rebound assembly by pulling straight out. If you're disassembling a Matic Expert, you'll notice that the rebound assembly looks different from the Matic Pro. The major difference between the Matic Pro and the Matic Expert is that the Pro utilizes a half cartridge damper system, while the Expert utilizes an in-leg damper system. If the fluid you dumped out looks like it's been contaminated by dirt, you're going to want to do some cleaning. To clean the inner components of the Matic, spray them down with isopropyl alcohol over a bucket. This will also clean off any contaminated fluid that might still be on those inner components. Here at Manitou, we use uh, low pressure compressed air to quickly clean the oil alcohol mixture off each piece. This method is highly effective in removing large particle contaminants that may be stuck on the components or in between the shims. If you do not have access to compressed air, an alternate method of cleaning is to first clean each component with isopropyl alcohol and then wipe them down with a lint-free towel. Using this method, you will also have to let the part sit so the excess alcohol can evaporate. Here at the Manitou Tech Department, we like to use a mechanical grabber to hold onto the towels while swabbing the inner legs of the crown steer assemblies. Swab the inner legs of the mattock with isopropyl soaked lint free towels while pushing them only one way. Repeat this with fresh towels until the inside of each leg is free of debris and shines with a mirror finish. Be sure not to scratch the inner leg with the mechanical grabber tool. This is a good point to inspect each component for contamination, unusual wear, missing O-rings, and damage before rebuilding the mattock. Using a downhill tire lever, pry up the old dust seal that's been pressed into the outer casting to locate the small cutout on the C-clip holding down the oil seal. Use a metal pick to pop the clip out of the groove at this cutout point. You then can slide the pick down the circumference of the clip until it snaps out completely. Use a folded piece of lint-free towel to protect the casting's paint while removing the oil seal. If your fork oil was heavy in dirt and grime, you're going to want to clean out your casting before replacing the oil and dust seals. Use a mechanical grabber and lint-free towel to swab out the outer casting. Use large amounts of isopropyl to wash out any dirt and grime. Be sure to air dry before reinstalling the outer casting onto the inner legs. Spray a small amount of isopropyl alcohol to help lubricate the oil and dust seal. When installing the oil seal, make sure that the lettering is on top. Press in the oil seal with the Matic seal press. You can now reinstall the C-clip. Make sure that it snaps into place. The dust seal also has writing on its top surface. Now press the dust seal in until the top lip of the seal is flush with the outer casting. Apply a small amount of fork oil to the TPC Rebounds O-ring. This will allow a smooth insertion of the TPC Rebound. Insert the TPC Rebound and using the Matic Cassette tool, Tighten the cap down to the proper torque. Remember that the Pro TPC Rebound will be encased in a cartridge, 
while the expert will be a non-cartridge design. Place the crown steer assembly in the upright position. Pour fork oil into the inner leg until the oil height is about one inch from the threading. Make sure that the rebound is three clicks from full rebound. Cycle the rebound rod up and down about 15 times to bleed any air out of the TPC assembly. Fully extend the TPC rebound rod before setting the proper oil height. Ball up a clean, lint-free rag and plug the open crown to prevent the fork oil from spilling out while rebuilding. Place a generous amount of M-Prep on your finger and spread it on the outer diameter of the air piston. Also put some M-Prep on the top of the piston. Use some rotational motion while reinserting the compression rod. This will ensure that you do not cut the O-ring while reinstalling the compression rod. Tighten down the compression rod cap to a torque of seven to nine Newton meters or 60 to 80 inch pounds. and place three cc or three milliliters of semi-bath oil on top of the air piston. Replace the top air cap of the Matic using a flat ground 24 millimeter socket at a torque of seven to nine Newton meters or 60 to 80 inch pounds. Attach the shock pump and with the air purge button depressed, fully extend the compression rod. Add 15 PSI to the system to prevent it from moving while reinstalling the outer casting. Place the inner legs at a slightly upward angle. Fully extend the TPC rebound rod. Slide the inner legs into the outer casting about halfway, making sure not to fold over the dust and oil seals. Slide the outer casting down until it makes contact with the rebound and compression rod adapters. Turning counterclockwise, tighten the compression rod and rebound rod adapters to the outer casting at a torque of 30 to 40 inch pounds or 3.5 to 4.5 Newton meters. Be sure not to compress down the outer casting while torquing down these two adapters. Position the Matic Crown Steer Tube Assembly in the downward position. Three methods that you can use to measure this oil height are a small ruler, a caliper's depth gauge, or a race tech suspension tool. This method is the caliper depth gauge. Here's a demonstration of how to use the ruler to measure the oil height. The Matic Pro will have an oil height of 77 millimeters, while the Expert will have a height of 80 millimeters. Prepare the MC squared compression damper by lubricating the initial seal. Force the MC squared compression damper straight down with rotational motion until it reaches the threading of the top cap. Tighten down the compression rod cap to a torque of seven to nine Newton meters or 60 to 80 inch pounds. Place the silver washer back into the top cap of the MC squared assembly. The orientation of this washer will be with the groove facing downward. Orientate the low speed knob so the click range is how you want it. The factory setting has the range of motion facing the right side of the Matic. Use a 13 millimeter socket to install the low speed knob lock nut. This will be finger tight. Place the high speed HBO knob combo on the top of the low speed knob and snap it into place. So you'll want to be sure to secure the HBO adjuster down with your thumb while installing it. Insert the knob bolt and tighten to a torque of 0.5 to 0.7 Newton meters or 4 to 6 inch pounds. Apply a small amount of blue Loctite to the rebound rod bolt threads. Hold the rebound knob still while reinstalling the rebound knob bolt at a torque of 0.5 to 0.7 Newton meters 
or four to six inch pounds. Double check to make sure the fork is fully extended by attaching a pump and pulling on the outer casting. Using the weight to pressure chart found on the Matic or at manitoumtb.com, charge the Matic with the appropriate amount of air to your weight. Reinstall the air valve cap finger tight. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions, just contact us at techsupport at hayesbicycle.com.